a little hands. I have never lived in a haunted house, but my mother did as a teen. Recounting a true event, other houses on her street had strange things going on too. A few homes away from her lived live a family. One night, the daughter went to a bed with a bad headache, and the next day she was dead. She had passed away from an aneurysm, one kind of a disease. Next day, after her funeral, the family went away to get the minds of the tragedy, and the father asked my uncle, my mom's brother, to check on the pets. My mom and dad, who were dating at the time, went with him. My mother had here. There was a grand piano, and she wanted to play it. My dad was studying to be a veterinarian. After entering the house, my uncle and my father headed towards the basement to see the animals, and my mother went to the piano on the ground floor. She was playing it when she felt something brush her ankle. She thought a cat must have left the basement and walked and passed her. She kept playing, and then she felt it again. She looked under the piano, saw nothing. When she started again, she felt a hand clasp her legs tightly. She dashed to the basement door and called my uncle and father and waited for them back outside. My uncle could tell my mom was rattled and asked what was wrong. She told him what had happened, and he turns white. He told her the daughter. Who had died used to play a game with her father. When he played the piano, she would have crawled underneath, grab his ankle, and push his feet up and down on the pedal. After listening, my mother and my father and uncle never went in their home, never went there again. Second story. The Phantom Patient, the ambulance company that I used to work for, had a haunted ambulance. Rick Twelve. A lot of the EMTs had stories about it, but I never put much stock in paranormal stuff. That is until I had my own experience with the Rick Twelve. My partner and I were working in a rural community at 3 a.m., and it was pitch dark and completely quiet. We were both dozing. I was in the driver's seat and she was in the passenger seat. I woke up to the muffled voice, but I thought my partner was talking. I told her I was trying to sleep, and close my eyes. I distinctly hear a male voice say, "Oh my God, I'm dying," followed by a few seconds of heavy breathing. My partner and I sat up straight. And look back into the patient's compartment, where it sounded like the voice had come from. Things were quiet for a couple of seconds. Then we heard the click of an oxygen bottle regulator, and a hiss, as if it was leaking. I turned on the lights, and we ran out of the rig. I thought the transient might have climbed in while we were asleep, so we opened the rear doors. No one was there. I checked the oxygen bottles. Neither was open. We didn't sleep much after that. The evic attic. A few years ago, I moved into a one-bedroom apartment in Melbourne, Australia. They went on the record. It was my first time living on my own. The apartment block had been built in 1930s. I had been there for a few months. When I came from a work one day, I went into the bathroom. I saw something strange: a wooden board which had covered a hole in a ceiling that led to a small attic space lay fractured into two pieces on the ground. I examined the pieces. The board was an inch thick, and it would have taken a Bruce Lee to break it. I thought the landlord had sent someone to work on the attic. I was frozen stiff with fear. Something, someone is up there for sure. I thought. I emailed the pictures to the landlord, asking if anyone had been there, with an undertone of annoyance, since he hadn't warned me. 
I reply, Re, please call me as soon as able to. I called and she explained that her last two tenants had said the same thing happened. She promised to replace the board and she did. A month later, I woke up one night around 4 am. My body was covered in a goosebumps. It felt like someone was rubbing his or her hands on me. Everything was silent, but then I heard a dragging sound coming from above my bed. It was as if someone was pulling a sack of potatoes, convinced someone was up there. There is no way an animal could make that sound. After 5 minutes, I woke up courage to turn on the lights, arm myself with a cricket bag and walked into the bathroom. That's when I saw that the new board covering the hole was broken in two. I felt sick. The dragging sound had stopped, but I heard something else. Whispering, the sound was clear and coming from the attic. It sounded like a children's voice. I could hear one sentence repeatedly over and over again. It's your turn. It's your turn. I switched on the every lights in the apartment to make things feel normal. It was 5 am, the dark outside. I watched TV to try to unwind. Then the fuse blow. My pet's buddy, Dexter, whom I kept in the kitchen, usually never made a sound at night. But, but he started screaming like he was being a strangled. I would never hear him make those sort of noise. He was screaming. I grabbed my car keys, ran out and sat in my car and waited there until the sun came up. When I saw the people walking the dogs, this comforts me enough to go back in. The front door was open but I figured I might have forgotten to close it. When I ran out, I went to the kitchen to check on Dexter but he wasn't in his cage. I felt sick again. All my windows were closed so I looked everywhere inside. When I walked to the bathroom, I heard the slashing. Dexter was half drowned into the toilet. I took him out, washed him and drained him. I was so confused. At 8 am, I called the landlord and gave her watered down version of the night. Oh wow, you hear the whispering, whispering too, she said. I stayed in that apartment for another 18 months. I hear the whispering on a few occasions and twice the board covering the hole in the ceiling moved. Although I, I live elsewhere now, the landlord recently called. She said that her new tenant had begged to speak with me about some of the stuff that's been going on there. Forget it. It's their problem now, not mine.